Let's get some immediate reaction now. I'm joined by the Minister for Regional Development, Local Government and Territories, Christy McBain. The opposition leader, very clear there in his opposition to the, the voice. He doesn't think that it's the, the solution to the very real issues faced by Alice Springs. What's your reaction to what you heard from him this afternoon? I think what you've heard from the Leader of the Opposition is absolute politics. Um, issues in Alice Springs aren't something that have just come up in the last 12 months. They've been long-standing issues uh, for, for decades now. And if the Leader of the Opposition was so concerned, where was he during the 10 years he was a Cabinet Minister of the former government uh, pressing some of these issues he's now pressing. I think it's disingenuous to say that uh, this proposal is going to be a Canberra voice. It is very clearly going to be a voice to Canberra. And that is the difference that we are talking about. We're talking about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people giving their voice to Parliament, to the executive government, not being a voice in Canberra. Um, it is disingenuous of him to frame it in such a manner. Um, and it's disrespectful to the 1,200 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that came together, that penned and signed the voice, um, that took place, uh, took part in numerous dialogues. Um, these are people from all parts of the country, from uh, remote, from rural, from regional and from metropolitan centres, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people living across the country who came together to frame that voice. Um, so I think it's... Um, pretty horrible the way he's just framed uh, what that voice statement says. When he had made the point, though, this afternoon alongside uh, one of his uh, coalition colleagues in Jacinda Price, he, he says he's listening to the voice of those on the ground, including that local business person that was with him, uh, Jacinda Price herself, another Alice Springs resident. Look, there are numerous voices across the country who are talking about both practical measures that could be taken and also symbolic measures that could be taken. It is not a choice between one or the other. It is doing both and progressing both. And that's where the Albanese Labor government substantially differs uh, from the Liberal and National uh, opposition. We think you can do both. You can walk and chew gum at the same time. This isn't doing one thing or another. This is being really clear about, yes, there should be formal recognition in the Constitution for First Nations people, and we should also enshrine a voice to Parliament in the Constitution so that it can't be changed on the whim of any elected government going forward. This is significantly about trying to change the day-to-day -day lives and outcomes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the country. We know the Closing the Gap Target reports show us that they are, there are worse housing outcomes, worse worse educational outcomes, social outcomes. We need to make sure that we are taking what we are hearing and turning it into policy. What we're hearing from Peter Dutton is he wants us to, to do the policy and then put that to the people. That is no different to what's been done for the last 122 years uh, since Federation or the 100 uh, of years before that and that the outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people haven't been any better under that system. Minister, the opposition leader also urged the Prime Minister to spend more time on the ground in Alice Springs, having a dig at him for not being there for long enough to understand the gravity of the situation. Should he take him up on that offer? The Prime Minister's been in Alice Springs, has met with a local council, with local organisations, with local residents um, from uh, the, the area as well as some of the town camps. Um, there is always more work that can be done, but again, I think you've seen the opposition leader playing politics here. I don't recall seeing him in Alice Springs when the same issues were being talked about under Prime Minister Morrison or Prime Minister Turnbull or Prime Minister Abbott. Um, this is politics uh, for Peter Dutton and I think it's disingenuous to suggest that he has done anything other than play politics today. The, the shadow foreign minister, a leading moderate in the Liberal Party, Simon Birmingham, told me on this program earlier this afternoon that he won't be campaigning for a no vote at the referendum. That's not his intention to do that. So clearly there are differences of degree in terms of 
the opposition's view here, as we saw with Julian Lisa yesterday? Yeah, it's clear that there are people in the Liberal Party who uh, are not going to actively campaign for a no case, even though that is the position that's been put by the party. Uh, Simon Birmingham, uh, Warren Ench has also said that he wouldn't actively campaign. Uh, and we've seen the resignation of Julian Lisa from uh, the shadow front bench. Um, and I think that probably speaks very much to his principles and the amount of work he's done um, with Indigenous groups over the last decade, uh, coming up with a model uh, for a voice uh, to Parliament through uh, a change to the Constitution. Uh, I think we'll probably see more Liberal Party members come out in support of the voice, like we saw from uh, former Premier Perrottet, which we've seen from Premier Rockcliffe. Um, and we know that the position held by a lot of the, the state uh, Liberal parties uh, is in stark opposition uh, to Peter Dutton's no -alition. Minister for Regional Development, Local Government and Territories, Christy McBain, thanks for your time. Thank you very much.